Welcome, this is Pause. It's easier than you think. And the topic today is the text that I received from one of my students. And I think it is a really simple text, but it has, when you unpack it, um, a lot of profound aspects. So the text was, I'd been so good at lying to myself for so long. I honestly can't decipher how true versus calculated these are anymore. If I'm blocking the truth within myself, how can I even recognize the glass ceiling to my own imagination? So let's go through that. I've been so good at lying to myself for so long. Powerful. I honestly can't decipher how true versus calculated these are anymore. These is a really interesting concept, which we will go through then. <laughs> so, I've been so good at lying to myself for so long. To even recognize that you may be lying to yourself is truly the beginning of coming out of um, a spiritual amnesia. To even ponder the notion that you might be lying to yourself. Now we know this because we did it when we were little, remember? We did this lying to ourselves. Be quiet. Thank you. And, you know, we would lie to get out of school. We would, oh, I have a tummy upset because I want to stay home. And our mothers knew, right? Our mothers, those of you that are mothers know that fib, that lie to get out of um, something we don't want to do. And it goes into adulthood. It goes into adulthood um, but it becomes much more sophisticated and it becomes um, a constant overriding or outsourcing of what the truth is. Your truth. The truth. Not just your truth, but the truth. It's kind of like take burnout, for example. You know, you have this um, phrase, quietly quitting, that was all over social media from jobs. And I laughed when I heard that because I was like, oh, well, that's what we used to call smart in the 90s. That was just smart. Where you realize that you weren't really being um, acknowledged. You really weren't going to get any further this was just not your culture. This was not your your um, place through jealousy, through envy, through whatever it is. And burnout is when we stay in things too long, right? When we stay in, um, sorry, magic's legs caught. <laughs> um, when we stay in um, positions, jobs, even relationships. And uh, the byproduct of that is burnout. The byproduct is because you, you're, you, the true self knows, the knower knows that you are lying to yourself. There is a chip inside of you that knows. It always knows. And you can override that by, well, you know, I just want to give them a few more months. Well, it's just not the right time. Well, and that mask can be because you don't want to go for interviews. You are frightened of interviews. You're frightened of going out there. You're frightened of putting yourself out there. You're frightened of taking those leaps. 
But rather than facing the fear of being frightened and collapsing those, we tend to um, lean in the other direction. So to even recognize that you're lying to yourself um, with phrases like, I'm fine, doesn't bother me, I don't want to upset the apple car, I'm too busy, I'm too tired, I'm, 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 you know. Um, and people who do yoga know this, people who know that, oh God, I don't want to do that yoga class, I don't want to go and do my practice. And you then, now, people have said to me, am I faking tiredness? No, it's a, a mechanism that comes up for you to feel tired. And you know sometimes when you go to the class and you're like, oh, I'm so tired. And all of a sudden, it's the best class ever. It was so powerful. You know, because you uh, overrode that... Um, uh, excuse tiredness and knowing the difference between being tired and saying listen you know I did a really intense class today I'm gonna do a kind of like softer class you know tomorrow um, that's a difference that's a deciphering and discerning your needs when you are shutting yourself down because you don't want to push through. That's something that's addressed in, in a spiritual practice. That's something that is a spiritual practice. It's not a um, psychological um, syndrome. It is part of the human condition to fine tune, to know the knower. And when you know that you are, and let me tell you, you can kid yourself on for decades. You know, you can pretend, and I see it here a lot, see in Los Angeles, where people are pretending that they're doing everything that they can do, but they don't go on auditions because they are audition averse. They, but in their head, they are being actors. In our head, we are sometimes telling ourselves that we're doing everything that we can do. And only you know that. Someone might say it to you, that might be close to you, but most people won't because they don't want to um, get in the middle of you and your psyche because most people will defend their position or they'll fall out with someone who tells them i don't think you're really giving it your all so these are the things that you know in the statement i've been so good at lying to myself for so long i honestly can't decide, decipher how how true versus calculated these are anymore. These, what is, what is, what are we talking about with these? These are the um, excuses, um, the overriding of what needs to be done, the naysaying to yourself, the internal dialogue that poo poos any idea that uh, shoots it down before it's even started, that makes excuses for um, not doing it. You, you could call it what uh, uh, Michelle had said, lies. But, you know, lies and liars, people don't really... Um, again, when you have a spiritual practice, you, you know that there is a liar within you. but to admit that you're lying this is this is the whole basis i think of aa and you know i know a lot of people who are sponsors in aa and i love the program but aa is considered um or any aa oa is considered um a thinking problem 
but that is virtually everybody um, on the planet has a thinking problem. And the problem is we won't admit. We will want other people to force us to admit to something, but we won't self-admit. And that's why AA became so powerful because the first sentence in it was just the self-admittance of taking responsibility and accountability. Hi, my name is so-and-so and I am. My name is an I am. That is a liberation from the lies that um, someone who is struggling with addiction um, deals with because, oh, I'm not as bad as that person. I don't have it like that. I'm not a mess like them, yada, yada. Until their life um, implodes in chaos. Not always. Some people know, they get the message, they get that psychic phenomenon that tells them this is getting bad and they shift uh, with that clarity. But most people will have to go through something and when we are lying to ourselves, there is a chaos that ensues around us to get our attention. It actually amplifies um, so that we get to see what we're avoiding. And it's all a shield, you know, it's all a defense mechanism or a delay tactic to knowing what I need to take responsibility or accountability to do or be. Energetically defending, not doing. Well, you know, I don't do it because it's going to be a lot of work. I'm not doing it because I don't know where I'm going to land. I'm not doing it. But what I will do is I will um, energetically feed the status quo, which is a bottomless pit. And it takes a lot of energy, a lot of energy to be deliberately inert. Because you're fighting something. You're trying to fight and hold the position. And that's can make people take a lot of illnesses. You know, it's a mutation in the autoimmune because if the deep knower knows that um, you're putting up with stuff, you know, it makes you ill, it makes you sick. Someone else said, stop it. He got off right there. <laughs> um, someone else said, listening to what I feel versus intellect intellectualizing and trusting my gut more. And this is the thing, the person that had uh, written this to me had said, oh, I think I have imposter syndrome. Label, 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 label. Oh, tilted. <laughs> I have an imposter syndrome. But that is also another hiding place. I have imposter syndrome, that's what it is. Maybe you don't have imposter syndrome. Maybe that's another shield to you not going forward to do what you, uh, or go to places that you need to go to and pitch what you need to pitch. Maybe it's convenient for you to call yourself an imposter. You see, the labels can also be hiding places. The diagnosis can be a hiding place, a delay to doing what you need to do when it's time to do it. I think we're now in a time that people who in my time in the 90s would tell friends, would tell friends what they thought, what they saw you doing and and they did it in a way that was real and I find now with um, people don't want to be that outsource knowing anymore for someone they don't want to enable it anymore They don't really want to get involved with 
whatever this monkey business is, the, the chatter, the monkey chatter, the monkey mind jumping from one thing to another. I don't even tell students sometimes what I know, what they're doing. Because either they'll get scared because I can see it or they'll defend their position. I wait for them to volunteer because I'm working with grown-ups, right? I'm working with people who are um, doing really deep work for them to say, you know, I, I, I think I'm doing this thing, but I can't get to the bottom of it. The admittance. And also it's a game that they need to see the pattern of. Because if you go around telling everybody at every turn, you know, it can be a little um, of a Debbie Downer. There's also people that will want to outsource that knowing to me. You know, I had a student a few days ago, oops, sorry. I had a student a few days ago that said to me, um, well, you told me I was ready to do my level two. And I said, no, I didn't. And that's that outsourcing of I'm feeling uncomfortable and I might not be ready. I said, you told me you were ready. And that puts the power back to the person. Oh, that's right. I said I was ready. So what is this that's coming up for me? Because I said I was ready. Because we outsource it. So that we can blame someone else that I'm not ready and you're forcing me to do it. And then when I did that, all the noise in her head disappeared. And she was now in the powerful position of being the decider that she had forgotten. <laughs> That's right, magic. <laughs> so let's go back to, you know, what the statement was, I've been so good at lying to myself for so long, I honestly can't decipher how true versus calculated these things are anymore. I'm, if I'm blocking the truth within myself, how can I recognize the, the, the glass ceiling? Exactly. Oh my God, I'm realizing I'm cheating myself. I'm realizing by blocking the truth within myself, I'm delaying my joy. How do we know? We have to we have to acknowledge the other end of the spectrum. When you keep saying I don't know, I don't know, you could say, but I do know. I just don't want to know. I want to play the game of flip-flop. I want to play the game of the seesaw. Maybe I do know, but I just don't like the answer. Maybe I do know, and I don't like doing what I need to do. So how can I avoid it, right? How can I delay? How can I waste time? Oh, I know I can listen to more podcasts. I can listen, read more books, gather more information. Avoid being tuned in, being the instrument. You know, if an instrument's out of tune, you don't keep playing it. But the musician then has an excuse, right? Oh, my, 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 my instrument's out of tune. Then the musician doesn't need to get better because my instrument's out of tune.
you know, the game, the spiritual game of playing hide and seek with yourself is um, well documented. By the Sufis, in yoga, in the sutras. And, you know, when I was doing yoga and Ayurveda 10 years ago, uh, or longer, I think, um, I I hurt my ankle in this um, motorcycle accident. And I got told in a meditation to go do yoga teacher training, but not to teach yoga. And I knew which one that was. It was a whole lifestyle course. It was very long. And it was the classics and it was going to be a lot of work. And I didn't have the time. And I decided that I was going to go around all the studios in Los Angeles and we, and I knew a lot of them <laughs> and test all the, the studios and talk to them about their course, yada, yada, yada. And I did that once. And there was an agitation in me when I was um, at this yoga class because I knew exactly what studio I had to go do yoga and Ayurveda at. It was the only studio in Los Angeles. But I was in avoidance. So I didn't waste too much time. I was gonna take three to six months with my research to discern, to know but I was really in avoidance. So on the Saturday, I went to the studio and I had already decided not to like the class. <laughs> and I went in and uh, it was a great class. It was a classic class, 80 minutes and then 20 to 30 minutes meditation. And in the meditation, I got a very distinct message that this was the studio. Very clear. And I was so mad. Because I already knew. And I was mad because I didn't want to do that much work. I wanted to dabble. I didn't really want to get that deep. But I surrendered to my own knowing, knowing better than me. And I signed up. And for a week, I huffed and puffed, hummed and hawed through the whole experience until I realized that I was killing the joy of it. But that's when you catch it. There's so many subtleties there. I was being calculated for sure. I was being calculated to avoid this course. People have told me that they've avoided doing sessions with me, doing um, the teachings with me. But then what happens is things start to amplify. You know the ex expression, I'm sure you've heard it, what we uh, resist persists. And um, it was Carl Jung that said that. But he actually, there was another part of it. He said that, it, that things get louder. It will get louder, it will amplify. And it's not just the sound of it that will amplify, it's the uncomfortability of your own knower, knowing what it is that you need to do, what it is that you need to be, what it is that you need to change, what it is that you need to delve deeper into, what it is that you are in avoidance to. And when we have a a spiritual practice, we're less in the spiritual amnesia. We're kind of climbing out of it. We have been for the last thousand years. So how do we avoid it? Just by knowing that it is actually something that we do. When we admit that it is actually 
a outsourcing of our own knowing, our outsourcing of our own responsibility and accountability. So that's the game of hide and seek. Then there's the, the ignoring. We can, you know, the word ignorance is in the word ignoring. What are we being ignorant about? How am I pleading ignorance here? By not researching, by not looking. And then there's also the dabbling. Let me dabble over here with this work. Let me dabble with things that don't work because I don't really want to go to the core. And that's also a delay tactic. And I, for 20 years, have seen, you know, artists, actors, directors, those that have dabbled, that they, but they tell themselves they're doing everything they can do. No one's going to say anything to them. No one's going to... Um, be their uh, conscience. You get to kid yourself on for decades. But artists have this burning off of lies because the artist in not being able to do what they're here to do is like a slow death for them. So the creative, the artist, they know it's, it's very similar vibrationally when I'm working with people who have been given a diagnosis that's terminal they get very intense very quickly and want to clean out the basement and clean out the attic and do their emotional inventory very intensely, very quickly, very sincerely because time is now compressing out the lies the wasting time, the avoidance, the outsourcing, the anger, the fear. And it's a, it's a great thing to really understand that time is of the essence. Time with the friends that you have, and I think you all got that during COVID, right? During this phenomenon, the time that you want to spend and who you want to spend that time with is, um, where is where the truth is at you know because prior to 2020 2020 yes um there is that 2020 right hindsight or the 2020 we did we we entertained the entertaining stuff right And this phenomenon has allowed us to not entertain things that we used to entertain or thought was entertaining. Not that things have gotten real, but things did get real. 
And I think people have got more real. But also we are just maybe a year out of all of that. Not even. So we're in the kind of party cycle. Oh, let's go to a concert. Let's go out. You know, the, ph the phenomenon of gathering again is fun and exciting. But there's also, it takes us um, a few years to uh, admit and see some of the things that this um, phenomenon has created. And some people are more uh, anxious. They're more um, agitated. They are more withdrawn, more isolated. But we can also make it, well, I don't, I like working from home. But is it the best for you? <laughs> Only you know that. I know people's circles have definitely got smaller. And what are some of the other avoidance? You know, we touched on AA earlier. Alcohol sales have went up. Marijuana has become legalized everywhere. Everyone's on shrooms or microdosing. Only you will know through time whether that was a byproduct of what we've been through as a coping mechanism or whether it is something that's helping you. To know we find that in practice. There's no book. There is a practice to know. And in your practice, you know when you're discerning and when you're in avoidance and when you are shutting down. You can even get tired. You can even fake tiredness to yourself. Oh, I got so tired all of a sudden. And I was supposed to do that meditation. I'm supposed to reiki myself. I, 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 I was supposed to tap in and unpack that stuff. I got tired. And those of the, you that know, sometimes that tiredness is a way to shut you down. Even when people want to meditate, Oh, I lay down and I took a nap. That's a nap. <laughs> That's a nap. That's napping. Yoga Nidra, on the other hand, is a horizontal practice. Meditation is a vertical practice. You're sitting up. But people don't interfere. Teachers don't interfere if you've decided to do things another way because it's convenient, because it uh, feels not as uncomfortable. And there are uncomfortable things that we have to recognize is this uncomfortable because I don't want to do it? Is this uncomfortable because um, I'm in avoidance? And the thing is, all of that is in the thinker. It's easier than you think to know. Once you begin a practice that starts to um, have the thinker as the servant, serving you, not ruling you. To be or not to be, that is the dilemma. 
but it's really to be the nor. Knowing if you're wasting time, but really knowing if you're not choosing being that nor because you don't want to know. So I would say start with that. Start with, maybe I just don't want to know. And what is it I don't want to know? And put that on the spectrum of here, I don't know. Or maybe I do know. I just don't want, that's, a, that's an inconvenient answer. That's an inconvenient thing I need to do. That's an inconvenient practice. That's, that's gonna take a lot of work. That's, oh. And that's kind of all I have to say on it. Um, I'm gonna finish with, you know, someone had sent me an answer on uh, Instagram and said, you don't know your true self, what you want or need lost in caring for others. Lost in caring for others. But who was the loser that got lost in caring for others? What was the, what did I get from so caring for others that I lost me in that? And then what happens when the person that's caring for others is so lost that they get away with, uh, get away from what their wants and needs are and 10 years later, it's a shell because it's, drifted away from itself. I think you do know your true self. I think you know your true self, but you don't know how to balance what your wants and needs are with other people's wants and needs. in a way that is a non-violent communication. I don't think you get lost. <laughs> the person's online that wrote that to me and they're like, oh, I felt that. <laughs> I know this person really well. So they're, they're um, on the other side of this, uh, getting that uh, download, getting that message, getting that energetic sucker punch. Because <laughs> that's sometimes what we need. We need the energetic sucker punch. But once you have a practice, you actually start to, uh, oh, thank God, thank God I got sucker punched by myself. Because if I get sucker punched by myself, and I, the, the jigs up. <laughs> And I know I can at least have a sense of humor about it and be like, okay, okay, okay. And start laughing and start being like, not taking this rubbish so seriously. <laughs> so seriously. My God, you are all so like getting flogging yourself about it rather than just being like, you know what? I do know my true self. I didn't know how to balance my needs and all once and I decided to go down a rabbit hole, you know, uh, being lost in this little house in the parade of the Waltons uh, <laughs> of caring for everybody else and letting myself get the last, you know, morsels. When you start getting that honest with yourself, you can only just throw your hands up and be like, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. And it's so fresh, right? It's so fresh and it's so delicious and it's so needed. And it's, it's like being bathed in a spectrum of light 
being ba bathed from all of that filthy lies <laughs> that you keep telling yourself. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to be like, wow, I did that. I'm wasting my time. <laughs> what is it I need to do to get out of this hole? Okay, or um, sometimes it's quicksand. Let me tell you, sometimes it's quicksand and you you need to just be in the quicksand while you are getting pulled out inch by inch with your practice or, you know, your teacher. And that can be um, what is needed and it can be excruciating. It can be, um, someone had said to me once, you know, I sometimes really fear the sessions um, of what is going to come up because it's never what I expect. And I said, I would actually be more frightened of sustaining the narrative and the lie and the, um, complex, um, littleness or limitations that I'm living in, uh, than actually what's going to come up in a session. Our fears are misplaced. The fear of actually going into the truth of um, doing the deep excavation of um, discerning what you need. Rather than, you know, I would be more frightened at not doing that and wasting the precious time that I have here. But we are in a free will zone and you have the free will to choose not to. And you have the free will to go there. Those of you that have people who have addiction in your family, you know this. The wasted years, no one saying, no one telling them that they're being destructive, they're being, you know, the enabling that goes on, the time wasted being in this vibration of pretending you're not you don't know you have a problem you don't know that there is a problem you don't know and whatever that's going to take to get your attention it can be really harsh it can be really um devastating but not always not always when you hold that power and say, I know, I know, I know I need to change my life and I'll do what it takes to show me where and who and um, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And when you're in that place, you have energetically taken the power to be responsible. You've energetically taken the accountability. You're in the most powerful place in your life, you are the chooser. So it was good to gather and see you all. And yeah, do with this as you may. It may speak to you. It may be speaking to you about someone that you know. And sometimes you have to say, I know what I need to say. I know what I need to do. 
with my friend, with my partner, with my job. I'm just not doing it. And then maybe journal about it and see what comes through or meditate on it. I hope that helps. It's a very confusing <coughs> time for a lot of people. Magic. Magic wanted to have his two cents in. <laughs> Here for you, those of you that don't know. Oh my goodness, can I get you up? Can I? Can I? Oh, let's have a magic moment together. <laughs> right, oh, let's have a magic moment. Magic moments. <laughs> So I will post this, it's pr probably pr pretty long, and I'm not going to edit out the dog barking, and that's what makes us human, and that's what makes this real, right? And uh, I look forward to... Uh, <laughs> Magic's giving us magic kisses. So, you know. He's getting a he's getting his little Japanese haircut at the end of the month at uh, Euphoria. Oh, it's his new place. So, looking forward to seeing you all. And uh, yeah, take care. And I'll post this. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Later.